Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about shared preferences, which are used as a way to easily save preferences from your users. So even if you close your app, you can just load the save preferences again. And as you can see, I already set up a simple layout here with two edit texts, one for the name and the age, and a checkbox whether the user is adult or not. So if you followed through this series until now, then you should be able to create that layout by yourself. So I won't show you how to do this in this video. Um, and my goal for this video is to be able to insert information in those views in the, in the edit text and the checkbox. Then we can click on save. So we save that information to a file in shared preferences. And when we close and reopen the app, then we can click on load and the saved information will be loaded in these, in these views again. So once you have set up your layout like I did or similar to that, we can jump into our main activity and start with the coding. The first thing I want to do here is I want to create a reference to our shared preference object. So we write val shared pref and set that to get shared preferences. And here we need to provide as a first parameter the name of the of the shared preferences. So we can have several different shared preferences and by providing a name for them, we make sure that we get the right one. So if you save your preferences, for example, in pref1, but you load pref2, then you won't be able to read the values from pref1. So that's why we have that name here. I will just call these my pref here. And as a second parameter, we have to enter a mode for how we want our shared preferences to be. So there are three different modes. The first one is mode public, and that means that it will make the file public. We save our shared preferences in. So that means every other app can access the shared preferences from our app. And usually we don't want that. So there is a mode private, which makes sure that no other app can read our preferences. And there is a third mode, which is mode append. And that means that it will take existing preferences, so it won't overwrite them. Um, it will take those and just append new preferences to those. So I will just choose mode private here. So make sure you, it inserts context.mode private. Then we're good to go. And whenever we want to write to shared preferences, we need its editor. And we get it by writing val editor is equal to sharedpref.edit. So that edit function just returns the editor of our shared preference reference. As a next step, we want to add an on click listener to our button save. So when we click on that button save, we want to write the data from our edit text and the checkbox to our shared preference object. So we write button save um, dot set on click listener. And in here, we first want to get references to our data. So we first have the name, which is equal to et name dot um, text dot to string. Then we have the age, which is equal to et age dot text dot to string dot to int since it's a number. And I won't do any exception handling here. It's just for demonstrational purposes. Um, so if the user enters a string that is not a number in the um, age edit text, then it will crash. But I won't catch this exception here. So as a next value, we want to provide is adult, which is a Boolean. And that is equal to CB adult, so our checkbox, and whether it is checked or not. So those um, are our values we want to save in our shared preferences. And after that, we can take our editor and call apply on it and make sure to use this Kotlin scope apply here and not this apply with parentheses here. So take it with curly brackets because inside of this apply block now, we can write put string to save a string in our editor, in our shared preferences. And all kinds of data we save in our shared preferences is saved as key value pairs. That means that we have to provide a key as a first parameter, which is the first string here, and then the value of that key, which is the data we want to save 
in our shared preferences. So we have to provide a key for our name. I will just call it name. And we need that key later on when we want to read that name. So we need to provide a, a way to um, name our preferences so we can easily read them later. The second parameter is the value. So the value of our key name is, of course, our name. But don't write this in quotation marks, of course, because we want to insert the value of our string here, of our of the value that we put in et name. Next, we don't want to put a string in, but an integer. So we write put int, and this one is the age, and we want to insert the value which is saved in our age variable. And finally, we want to put a boolean. So we write is adult. So you can name this as you want. You could also name this ABC, but it's not very clear what this means. So I just name it as I named the variable. And we of course want to insert is adult. And whenever we put our data in that editor and we finished, so that is all of the data we want to put in, then we need to call apply. And that is not the Kotlin scope apply, but it is the apply function for our editor. So that just means we're finished and we want to write the data in our shared preferences. And there is actually another function which is called commit, which does the same as apply, but commit will put the data synchronously in the shared preferences. So it will block our UI and main thread. And if we call apply, then it will do it asynchronously. So usually you want to prefer apply because that doesn't block your main thread. So that's it for writing the data. Now we want to add an on click listener to our button load. Button load dot set on click listener. And here we want to read the data and set it to the edit text and the checkbox. So we want to get the name from our shared preferences dot get string. And here we need to provide two strings again. So the first string is the key of our um, preference. So this key here, so we saved our name with a key name in it. And now if we want to get that name, then we have to provide that key. So we write name again. If we would call this ABC, then we would need to put ABC here. So that's how this key value pairs work. And I will just call it name here, here too. And the second parameter is the default value. So in case that name key doesn't exist, we still need to provide a value that we save in our name variable. And I will just put null here. So in case our name doesn't exist, that name will be null. Next is our age, which is equal to shared pref dot get int. The key is called age. And the default value, I will just set it to zero here. And finally, we have val is adult is equal to shared pref dot get boolean is adult. And I will just pass false here. So in case is adult does not exist, we will set it to false by default. And finally, we just need to set these values to our views. So let's start by writing etname.setText to name, um, etH.setText to age.toString. Because age is an integer, we need to convert it to a string. And finally, we need to write cb adult dot is checked is equal to is adult. So let's see what happens when we run our app. There we go. And we can just enter some data here. I will call I will call him Peter. He is 19 years old and therefore he is an adult. So if we now click save, then this will save our preferences to our shared preferences object. And if we now close our app and reopen it, this tutorials is here. And if we now click on load, then it will load our data in 
the views again. So it is really saved into a file and you can load it even after your device restarted. And what is really important to know here is that you should only use this for smaller amounts of data. So you shouldn't use this, for example, if you have um, a to-do to list app and you save all your to-do list items, your tasks in that shared preferences, that's not how it is uh, intended to be used. Instead, you should only use it really for preferences. So if the user makes some changes in your app settings, then you can save them in shared preferences. Or for example, if you have a game, then you can save the user's high score in it or something like that. But for the to-do list, for example, you would instead use a database, which is really used to save huge amounts of data. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if there's anything I can improve on, please give me that feedback below. That would be really helpful for me to improve on my content. And yeah, have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.